because I've actually been thinking for a while, just because I listen to a decent amount of podcasts, thinking yeah. about making my own podcast, going and just visiting people that I know from around the country and around the world and just like tell, letting them tell their story. I feel like if I can give an outlet for people to tell kind of their life story, it'll just be kind of interesting because everyone yeah. has a totally different upbringing and then, you know, adolescent life and adult life and all that kind of a cool outlet to tell stories. Everybody, welcome to a very, very, very special Throwback Thursday edition of the Andrew Deitch Podcast. And this is the 100th upload of the podcast. Not to be confused with the 100th episode that will be coming soon, but if you include episode zero and all the bonus episodes and weekly updates, then this is number 100 in the feed. And this is a very special day because this is actually the one-year anniversary of of me recording the very first Andrew Deitch podcast with my friend Adam Kishoro. Pretty nuts. That was even before this podcast had a name. I even actually joked about calling it the Andrew Deitch podcast and saying how lame of a name that was. But anyways, (laughs) if this is your first time listening to the podcast, thank you so much for checking it out. Um, This show is a place where I have extended conversations with the most fascinating people that I know. Um, But this episode is a little bit different than my other episodes because this conversation is actually a little over a year old. And this is the first real podcast I ever recorded. And to this day, it has never been released to the public. No one on planet Earth besides Graham and I have listened to it. So this is a world exclusive. So let me paint this picture for you. So on March 29th of last year, 2017, my friend Graham sent me a text that said, Hey, you want to meet up after work one day and be on my podcast? No pressure. And at the time, neither of us had any idea that this text would be so meaningful. I even considered not doing it. I hadn't seen Graham in a long time. I didn't even know what I wanted to talk about, but I thought, you know what? What the hell? This will be fun. So we were both living at our parents' house at the time, and neither of us really wanted to do it there. So on Sunday, April 2nd, 2017, we met up at my friend Calvin's recording studio, which is actually just kind of like a sad little bedroom in a basement that he was renting from my other friend's dad (laughs) and fun fact Calvin actually produced all the music that you hear on this podcast I think he actually made the intro song that I use for the podcast in that studio where Graham and I recorded this podcast so this whole thing really comes full circle I guess but anyways Graham showed up with his cardboard box full of recording equipment and microphones and I was honestly like impressed with how legit his setup was and typically Graham would kind of um, chop the conversation up remove any parts he didn't like all that kind of stuff But after a while, um, this process just became really time-consuming and draining and not fun. And eventually, he moved to Chicago a few months later, and he announced that he was going to be discontinuing the podcast. And, um, you know, I was was a little bit sad by that because obviously my podcast never came out. But um, he kind of uploaded one final episode explaining why he was ending it and thus... This episode, like I said, never saw the light of day. And a couple of months ago, I was talking to Graham and I asked him if it would be cool if I released this podcast on the one year anniversary of us recording it. And he said he would send me the file. So I told him how much this podcast had an impact on me and how it really did inspire me to start my own podcast. And some of you guys might remember, like I was posting a Snapchat story about it afterwards. I was really excited for it to come out. And needless to say, I think I've improved and grown a lot in a year. Definitely a lot more comfortable talking on the microphone and all that. But before I play this, I do want to say that this podcast was fairly um, anonymous. Like, it wasn't very public. Graham kind of used... uh, uh, He didn't use his last name on the podcast. He didn't want people, you know, sharing their names and all that. Because it was raw and um, very um, unfiltered. And this podcast is probably going to be listened to by more people than was ever intended. So quite possibly this is the most unfiltered that I've ever been because in my mind, I was not imagining that the audience would be this large. And it's kind of crazy though, because at the end, Graham asked me what the plans for the future were. And um, that was pretty cool to hear what I said, because after I did the podcast, I kind of decided like, I think I want to do a podcast. So anyways, I'm going to stop being so sappy and just play it for you. So without any further ado, here is the unabridged, long lost episode of the Logical Insanity Podcast. Check it out. 
Check one, two. Check one, two. Am I good? You're good. Kinda. Um, I think I'm coming in a little hot. <clears throat> I tend to talk kind of loud, though, so it might get louder. That's what I was thinking. You're, you're a loud guy, so. <laughs> <laughs> I really am. Do you like that you're a loud guy? Kind of. <laughs> like, sometimes it's... Sometimes it's kind of embarrassing because I don't even realize that I'm being loud. And yeah. then people are like, bro, you're being really loud. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> do you, uh, are you a drunk loud person? Like when you, I, like I when you so. have a few, do yeah. you get louder? It, yeah. I think that's... Unfortunately. I think I got that too. I think it's just Irish German people. I think our people just love to rage. I think so too. That's what, that's what you are, right? I'm guessing. You, you look like what Hitler had in mind. <laughs> I'm definitely a German, yeah. <laughs> Definitely super German and the last name. Yeah, that's true. And we won't say your last name for the folks, but introduce yourself. Welcome, I guess. My name is Andrew. Like. Okay. I don't really care if everyone knows my last name, to be honest, but... Okay, fair enough. Uh, well, I do. So... Um, <laughs> there we go. No <laughs> yeah. worries. Uh, I don't want you to sue me in a decade. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's actually a good point. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's, I wouldn't sue you. I know. I was, I'm just, defamation. I'm just, I'm just joshing. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just Drake and joshing. <laughs> But uh, yeah, welcome to the podcast, folks. I got the address from Andrew of where to do this, and it was in the neighborhood I live in. I was like, "Yikes! This is a <laughs> this is someone's house of a parent." I know. <laughs> That's so, hilarious. I did all my smoking and shit beforehand because I wasn't <laughs> sure if it was gonna be like, "Hi, Mrs. Levinson," you know? Like, yeah. That's uh, hilarious. Meeting parents and shit. <laughs> Well, have you been? And it man? was the Levinsons. That's yeah, the weirdest thing. We're at the Levinsons' house <laughs> in Pew Street Corners, Georgia. Yep. Um, but how have you been, man? It's been a while. Just so the people know, right? A little backstory yes. on us. Uh, how do how do we know each other, Andrew? I think the first time we ever actually met was at like freshman year at, in high school at a student council thing. I'm pretty sure that was the first. It's the first memory. I have of Graham. Sounds accurate. Yeah. Sounds like it'd be a thing. Yeah. I and was. I, I was going to say a, f- a funny thing because I was actually thinking about this before when you asked me to be on. I was like thinking about, I was like, how do I know Graham? And I was thinking, I was like, the first real memory I have of Graham was when we were like going around and we were like, okay, who wants to be class president? And like Graham like raised his hand and I was like, whoa, that guy like knows what he's doing. <laughs> Like I was, because like, because I was brand new to to the high school, and like I'd went to a private school before, so I was like still getting to know people and right. stuff. And I was like, that guy's got his shit together. Wow. <laughs> well, I appreciate you saying that. For the record, I did not, <laughs> and I still don't. So let's just get that cleared up first and foremost. <laughs> but yeah, I that's one of those things, man. You know, like the class president thing is one of those things that you think at the time you're like, this is everything. This is this is my kingdom. I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to stick it to the man. I'm going to be like Jimmy Stewart and Mr. Smith goes to Washington. <laughs> you I'm know, make sure the vending machines have the best snacks. Oh, like, yeah. I feel like that's always the main tenant of class presidents in movies. Yeah, it's always like people always run on shit that they can't accomplish too. It's like we're going to have an extra hour for lunch. <laughs> yeah. And all the administration is like, no, but you don't understand. Like, we have like a schedule and shit. Like, we gotta fit, we gotta fit class and stuff in. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, you're not really the president because really the principal is the president. The principal's not even the president. Who the principal has a boss who has a boss who has a boss, and it's, it's all true. it's just some red tape. The bureaucracy. president's the president. Seriously, <laughs> seriously, crazy. But um. So, walk me through the last year or so of of, of your life and That's what fair. you've been up to. So, the last year, um, so let's go back, I guess, to last March. Yeah, or is it April now? Wow, yeah, April 2nd. So, um, last April, I was living with my parents like I am right now. Super fun. Yeah, me too. I am too. <laughs> the weird thing, um, so I was working for a gym. And I was uh, working at the front desk and all that. I'd just come off a cool trip over the last, over the previous summer where I was an au pair. Do you know what an au pair is? It's like a fancy nanny? Kind of, yeah. So I was an au pair in Italy for the summer previous. And 
around that around this time last year. I was gearing up for another summer of that with a new family. Nice. So I was excited about that. And I'm pretty sure right around this time I had told my boss that I was both of my bosses, I had two jobs. I was working at this escape game place. Do you know what escape games are? I've heard of it. Yeah. So basically in a nutshell it's like you're in a room with a team of people, six to eight people or so. You have to like solve puzzles, crack codes, find clues, investigate okay. stuff. It's actually really fun. Kind of like if you picture those old like maybe like computer games you played as a kid where you had to like collect stuff, like Pajama Sam or like <laughs> weird stuff like that. I don't know if you ever played one of those. No, I haven't. <laughs> but anyways. But I've always thought those places, like the pitch to the insurance guy, the first time you get insured must have been so difficult. Picture this. You walk into the insurance room or office room in the office, whatever. And you own one of those secret game places and the guy's like, hey, what's what's your business? Let's see if this is good to be insured. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. We're going to put – first off, everyone's not going to know each other. We're going we're gonna to put them in a room and we're going to lock the door <laughs> and we're going to turn out the lights and we're going to see if they can get out. <laughs> it's like, fuck no, I'm not insuring <laughs> exactly. you. Are you kidding me? That sounds like a death trap. Yeah. People def- – there's definitely some sketchy ones for sure. But ours is the one that I work for is more uh, geared towards corporate team building. Okay. So like, cool companies like Pfizer or like whatever will come and bring their sales team, and they have right. to figure out how to get out. So like, yeah. <laughs> basically, it, it's kind of it's kind of a fun job. But anyways, so that's what that is. But okay. um, so I told my bosses I was gonna be leaving, and I did, and I went to Spain, lived in Madrid for three months with a cool family. That's awesome. Yeah. It was really cool. Lived with, um, uh, it was like in the suburbs of Madrid. So like kind of eh, not as far out as Norcross is from Atlanta, but like you could get into the city within like 15 or 20 minutes, I guess. Okay. Kind right, of. Right. And, um, but the weird thing about Madrid is it's kind of flat. So you can actually kind of see the city. So like if you're high up, you could like see it. Whereas That's like cool. here, you, there's like trees and stuff. You couldn't see Atlanta if you wanted to. Yeah. But, um, but anyways, so they had three boys and, uh, they were kind of crazy. It's cool because it was my second go around as an au pair. So like kind of knew what to expect a little bit yeah. as far as basically the point of an au pair was so that their kids could get a better grasp on English through immersion. So right, my job okay. was basically just to hang out with them and speak English, which is pretty easy. Yeah. That's pretty much the default, right? Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. <laughs> not, my Spanish is not great. <laughs> Especially if you were getting around with your job being like, hey, don't speak Spanish. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know I mean? Exactly. And it's kind of funny because they, you would think that they would want someone who could speak both so that, I don't know. In case shit hits the fan and he breaks his leg and you need to talk to the policia. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But um, they really kind of preferred someone who didn't speak as much Spanish just because the thing with the kids is like, with so the parents spoke fluent English pretty well, like very well, actually. I mean, compared to me speaking Spanish, they spoke English great. Right. But um, so they, if they were saying, okay, kids, now we're just going to speak English for the rest of the day, the kids would get really frustrated because it's like, mom, just freaking, come on. Like, I don't want to speak, I don't want to speak English. Come on. You understand what I'm saying. But for me hanging out with them, I didn't know what they were saying half the time. Mm. So they were kind of forced to, but they were kind of cool with it because they realized, okay, this dumbass doesn't know how to speak Spanish. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's hilarious. So we've got to sympathize with him and, and, and humor him and speak English with him. But it, it was cool. Their English actually did improve, which is cool. Yeah, I guess it'd have to, you know? Yeah. The person, your guardian for the day, every day, <laughs> yeah, exactly. doesn't know how to talk in your native tongue. That's awesome, man. Dude, Spain seems cool. Spain seems cool. I've, yeah. I've been to Barcelona, but like that's not Spain. Yeah, it's That's, definitely Barcelona's different. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I loved it though. I loved it. How That's long awesome. did you get to spend there? So in twenty fourteen I, I took a trip. My brother was living in Lugo at the time. Where is that? I'm it's right familiar. above Portugal. It's like the oh, okay. very northwest okay. portion of Spain. That's an interesting part of Spain too. Yeah, he, he loved it. That's he cool. loved it. So he was living there and and I was fortunate enough to get to go over and sort of backpack around for three weeks. Nice. Um so, you know, obviously him living there, the last thing he wanted to be a tourist at was Spain because he was living there the whole time. Exactly. So we went to, we, I flew into London, 
we went to Italy. We went to Barcelona. We went to Brussels, Amsterdam, uh, Budapest. We went to we went through Germany. Okay. Um, but we didn't really stop. Train or a uh, dude. It was a <laughs> shit. So we're we're in we're in Amsterdam and we need to get to Budapest. And there's the train was like 600 euro, like direct. Like it was like crazy. Like what? we, we, this was okay. very right. It's yeah, weird. I know this was the one portion of the trip that we didn't have mapped out. We figured it would be like, <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. The train is like 50 euro. yeah exactly. Like so we're in Amsterdam. We're, we're in the hostel. We've checked out. We're using their Wi-Fi, and all he has is a smartphone and he's trying to Wait, map why are you out in the hospital. No, no, the hostel. Oh, <laughs> I was like, I was like, that's a big part of the story. We're in the hospital <laughs> using their Wi-Fi, but basically, we had to get a bus to to uh, to uh, Munich with a stopover, a three-hour bus layover in Cologne, and there's nothing more defeating than a bus layover, and only three hours because you can't do much of that, dude. Yeah, we we had to just stay in the McDonald's. And exactly. just like use their Wi-Fi for three hours <laughs> in the middle of the night, like not good hours, oh, really. Shit, like that's terrible. Like, um, like early AM hours. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And then we got back on the bus, and it was one of those buses where it's it's two seats facing two seats with a little like table area. Oh, that's kind of weird. It kinda sucks. Co- yeah. Well, it sucks you're for traveling sleeping. with. Yeah, for sleeping. Yeah. Because you know, I was facing this Frenchman who's also trying to sleep. And we were playing footsie all night, like waking each other up, not even meaning to, you know, just kicking each other as hard, like as hard as we could, like sleep kicking. (laughs) But then we get there, we get there and um, we're in Munich and it's the first snow of the year. Like it's the first day that it's snowing because this is December and we've got this blah, blah car that that's coming to pick us up. And um, it's for those who don't know, Blah Blah Car is like a long distance Uber. If people are going somewhere anyways, they can get on Blah Blah Car. People can sign up and basically tag along. So we roll into Munich, just not in a good mood, like long ass <laughs> bus ride. I don't I, like neither of us slept well. Yeah, and, of course. And we're trying to get this guy on the on the Blah Blah Car. And it's looking like it's just not going to happen. Like he was going to meet us at like say noon and it was like getting like one thirty two. like we're, and we're fucked. Like it's snowing. It, like we don't have, oh, we don't no. know anyone. We don't have anything set up. Do you have winter gear? Like were you- we had jackets and backpacks and okay. stuff. So we were good there. Okay. And we bought like a, we bought like a baguette and some ham. So like <laughs> we made it work. <laughs> That's pretty we, standard. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But we were just in the Metro just like, Oh fuck. It's cold. Like, <laughs> I hope like is this him you know like 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 and then it would drive by and it's like oh god we're looking for like a, a uh what are the like a citron yeah he drove like a citron citroen, citroen something, whatever something. but he finally comes through he finally comes through my man benjamin and he no pulls way. up and it's like like a like we felt like we were rescued like the dude who's who's on the oil tanker that sinks and he just sees the orange helicopter coming He's like, fuck yeah, this is it. Like, I'm, I'm getting out of this situation. Um, That's awesome. But yeah, he he uh, picks us up and he was saying that they shut down the Autobahn because it was snowing because it was the first snow uh, of the year and he was the last car that they let through before they, they shut it down. Whoa. So, we would have been we would have been in a bad spot for sure. But yeah, and then Did from there- Did he speak English? Was he cool? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a cool dude. That's he was awesome. smart. He was, he was driving to Munich from uh, to Austria or to Munich from Austria. So we oh, got cool. that leg of the portion with Benjamin, nice. Who uh, was a smart guy. He were said, "Were you guys the only passengers, or were mm-hmm. there a couple?" Oh, okay, cool. yeah. It was just, yeah. And then from there, we stayed a night in Vienna. We got in late. Next morning, took a train to be nice. pushed. We got there, but it was a bitch. It took like a, like probably two days. Nice day and a half. But yeah, that's a, that's a fun little story about Germany. So you didn't get to see much of Germany, right? But you well, kinda, I'd been before. You've been before. Yeah. I'd been before. Cool. But, yeah. yeah. So you were in a blah blah car with Benjamin. That's cool. He goes, and he's this half Austrian, half German guy. And he was talking about. Um, he said, "Education is the most important." That was the worst accent I've ever done. I was like <laughs> half Spanish, half black. <laughs> half black. <laughs> My people lost everything. <laughs> That's amazing. But he said, he said, um, he said, education is the most important thing. For like a society, yeah. like that's pretty fucking wise. Yeah, you know, 
That's pretty wise. I mean, that, yeah, that's that's interesting. That but that was like his his thing. Every like all the time he was saying that. Well, he was a super worldly guy. Like he lived in South Africa for a while. That's cool. Um, he just he was very well informed. Just one of those people who's like a good citizen of the world. That's you awesome. Know? Um, I want to be like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, of course, of course. I feel like you meet a lot more like worldly people in Europe, or at least when you're traveling in general, you run into other travelers when you're traveling. You know, a lot of Australians. Yes, Australians are really cool. For the Australians most part, the shit. New Zealanders are really cool. Too. Yes, I, I think New Zealand is like Australia 2.0, from what I hear. I've never been, yeah. but apparently it's like freebasing Australia. Yeah, <laughs> like I um I I met a bunch of people from New Zealand um when I was in Belgium for this music festival, and there were so many people from New Zealand, and they'd get so pissed when you saw their flags and you thought it was the Australian flag because the flags are so similar. You're like, oh, you're from Australia, and they're like. No, fuck you. I'm from New Zealand. <laughs> I'm a Kiwi. I'm a, I'm a Kiwi. You fucker. You cunt. <laughs> well, they just, they love to have fun, man. They They're do. just a fun loving culture. They really do. Which is really all you can ask for. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, for sure. They party, dude. But, um, so we were talking about Barcelona. So you said you, you went through Germany and then you went, you went back to Barcelona or you did that at the beginning of the trip? No, that was like the first city that we did. Okay, cool. So we did three days there. We only stayed at most three days in each in like a place. That's that's kind of cool. Yeah. Um. So like Rome, we did three days. Amsterdam, Barcelona, like the big ones, Budapest, we did three days. Nice. And then the other ones, we did like a one day or two day. Like we did two days in Florence, one day in Brussels. Like, which I know one day isn't really that. You yeah. can't really like learn a city in one yeah. day. But, but when you're doing a trip, you got to... You got to cut your losses. Like, do we visit this place at all or do we yeah. skip it? Yeah. Yeah. And like we did, uh, we only did two days total in London, but one of them was New Year's Eve. So that was the shit. That's so cool. Yeah. I'm very jealous of that. That seems really awesome. Yeah. It was cool. It was cool, man. London's a cool spot. London's the only place in England I would really care to like go or maybe yeah. not go, but live. Yeah. I've only been to England once and it was for like a weekend for Yet again, another music festival surprise. But um <laughs> tend to go to a lot of those. But um it was like near Liverpool. And um it was pretty cool. I like I liked England for the most part. But um I've never been to London. I need to go. Yeah, it's just a big world city. Yeah, definitely. It's uh England's an interesting place. Yeah, it is, man. It's crazy because they really did it, man. They did it. Yeah. <laughs> they they conquered the world like <laughs> they did they did it man they fucking did it and they're so tiny now yeah man. but there's so many people like like you could I, I've heard of like uh I know like uh, comedians that live in England like they can make a living just touring around England and it's so small like it's crazy you don't have to travel much it's crazy yeah and think about how much the soccer must be so intense over there like oh, yeah. picture if the nfl was in this a, an area the size of the state of georgia i've never thought about it that way but that makes a lot of you sense. you would go to every game that like makes the travel, so much sense now. traveling support is so incredible because they what at, at the most it, you're driving from london to what fucking leeds yeah <laughs> like it's not that bad but, yeah oh um, that makes a lot of sense yeah because i mean we don't have rivalry. I mean, you, I feel like the most similar rivalry we would have is almost like college football here because, like, you would drive to, you know, Alabama or Georgia Tech or Clemson yeah, or something yeah. like that around here. Yeah. Dude, think about this, man. England, England's one of those countries that because they're an island, they just had to get really good with boats. Yeah. And because they're really good with boats, they could have the resources to just go all around the world, park outside your place – sending all their people to like take shit and take over that's true that's pretty crazy to think about like the seafaring powers yeah are like usually pretty pretty badass like yeah. japan like those archipelago yeah type places like england's kind of an archipelago the british yeah, yeah. isles yeah. then japan and the and i guess you gotta the get 30s. Good with boats that's for sure yeah like if you're if you're 100 percent land army that's a I mean, you'll do okay if you're like have a lot of people, like a red army, like Russia. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know. I, I'm more a fan of the Navy. Yeah. Navy's badass. We're a water planet at the end of the day, right? It's yeah. like, what, like 60, 70% water? I think maybe even more. I could be wrong. But 
a lot of water. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we got a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. I heard. Um, do you listen to Joe Rogan at all? I mean, Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah, yeah, I do from time to time. Yeah. One thing he said recently in one of his specials, he was like talking about California's in a drought, and they're like, "We've got a water problem." He's like, "Look, look out there. We've got so much fucking water. We don't have a water problem. We have a salt problem." It's That's like, true. Man. If we can just crazy. figure out a machine that can get rid of all this salt and filter out the ocean water, we, we're, we're gold. We get tons of water. We that is water true. Problem. That is true. We're right next to the water. It's so hard to do, apparently, or expensive. Yeah. You can, I think they, I've heard they have to do it through plants. Mm. Like, you have to put a plant in salt water that is able to process salt water and, like, fucking put out oxygen to make better, like, more water. Mm. How, how does that work? I, I, sound, I, I just realized idea. I just talked myself into a corner big time with this. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm just going to let you go on this one, man. The, the plant thing. The second I, I start talking about science, <laughs> science, 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 man. Can't do it. Didn't listen in Can't biology do it. Or so, or chemistry or whatever. Yeah, fucking Google it, folks. Don't get your news here. It's not a good source. <laughs> I've said it before. Fake news. This is fake news. This is fake news. Alternative facts here. You heard it first. Maybe I should just rename the show Fake News. <laughs> Fake news with Graham. The fake news podcast with Graham. <laughs> That'd be funny. That's hilarious. So, what was your favorite? What was your favorite spot when you went over there? Um, I really enjoyed Amsterdam. Amsterdam was really cool. Yeah, and I enjoyed it more than I thought, and it had a bigger impact on me than I thought it would. Um, I went there on a weekend with my one of my friends, Tom, and uh. We met initially because he was friends with one of my friends that I met at a concert back in America, and he was doing um, a work program in Barcelona. He lived in Barcelona, and uh, we were and I was living in Madrid, so we were like, "Yo, let's go to Amsterdam for the weekend." So we got a hostel and uh, just explored Amsterdam, and like it was just awesome, man. Like the people there so cool and attractive like everyone there i feel like it's so like put together in amsterdam i don't know yeah they're all riding around on bicycles smiling yeah and they're all like tall and like yeah. beautiful they're just like beautiful people they're all like for sure very well dressed very well put together everyone hangs out outside like i was there in the summer so like it's beautiful weather that's awesome like obviously i'm not the biggest liberal in the world but like the li- the like the way they do I feel like liberalism over there. I don't even know if you'd, yeah, it's super liberal, but I, I'm more of just the, I guess, in favor of let people do what they want as long as you're not yeah. hurting anybody else. And I mean, like they just have kind of the epitome of that. For sure. I couldn't agree more. And it's one of those places where capitalism won. Yeah. In the sense that you can sell, you can sell anything. Like you yeah. can sell weed. Just don't yeah. bug anybody. You can exactly. sell your body. Mm-hmm. Just don't bug anybody. Mm-hmm. Like it, the, the golden rule there seems to be, and I think this is the way it should be everywhere. Like as long as other people aren't annoyed or you're not like infringing on other people's business or yeah. rights, just whatever. Exactly. And that's why I, I, that's, I feel like that's kind of how the police are in Europe in general, sort of like they, they're not like out to get you kind of like in America. Yeah. It's like, they're sitting on the street with a radar gun, like trying to catch you doing something. Whereas in over there, it's more like if you're minding your own business, we're not going to mess with you. If you start causing trouble or annoying people, <laughs> yeah, then we're gonna we're gonna get involved. Which is totally the way it should be. Reactionary, totally. exactly. Not proactive. Yeah, like you should. In be some s- ways, you could be proactive, like, but but yeah. not in the sense of like just trying to. Not in the way of like being a glorified tax collector and just trying to like catch people speeding. No one's hurting anybody. So you know? true. Yeah. But yeah, Amsterdam is really cool. Um, I did some uh, psychedelics there, which was pretty awesome. That's cool. And uh, this would be my first time sharing this publicly. Um, but uh, it was so weird to me because I'd never actually like done anything like like psychedelic like i'd smoked weed and stuff and i like drank obviously and but it never really like i, I was always kind of like scared a little bit of like trying like yeah. drugs that would make you like super trip out but i was kind of like okay like these are mushrooms that grow in the ground they just so happen when you eat them 
you see some crazy shit and you makes you feel a certain way. Yeah. And that's why, like, sometimes with, like, synthetic drugs and stuff, you're kind of like, this was, like, made in a lab. It kind of weirds me out. Like, yeah. I don't know how this is going to affect my brain in the future. Like, right. I don't know if I'm going to be a space cadet for the rest of my life if I <laughs> if I do this. But, like, uh, doing uh, psychedelic mushrooms in Vondel Park was, like, the coolest thing ever. Tell, tell me about it. What what was so cool about it? Um. So, I'd I'd, like listened and heard a lot of stuff about it kind of i'd done a lot of like research on like the effects of it and all that and um first like i was kind of nervous but we so for those of you who don't know in amsterdam mushrooms like are illegal but magic truffles which are basically um mushrooms that didn't ever bloom above the ground they just bloom they grew in these weird little like almost like nuts underground. So if the conditions aren't right for a mushroom to like bust its little mushroom tip out of the <laughs> out of the grass, yeah. if it's not moist enough or whatever, it'll like grow underground. But it's literally the same exact plant. And for whatever reason, like the government like banned mushrooms, but truffles aren't illegal and they're the same exact plant. So you can't eat them when they're in the form of mushroom, but you can eat them in the form of truffle. Anyways, that's a... Stupid story. But so we ate them and, uh, you know, we were just chilling on this bench looking at this cool little creek with some flowers and stuff. And there's a guy next to us who had this like big dog and we were just kind of watching the dog and this guy. And he looked like he was on a date with this girl. He's kind of an older guy. And um, we were watching that. And, you know, all of a sudden we just started, you know, kind of just things just started kind of like breathing. I guess would be the weirdest way to kind of put it like looking at the ground and it's almost kind of like if you look at a person's stomach like rising and falling when they're breathing almost kind of like that okay. like things just kind of started like pulsing right. and you kind of start seeing some like geometric kind of patterns forming uh -huh. and it was weird because I thought that like I wouldn't really have as much control over it as I thought I as I I don't know. Like I thought that I wouldn't be really in control, but I found that if I focused on like looking at something and I wanted to see it for how it, how I normally saw it, I could, I could focus on that and like not see crazy visuals. But like yeah. if I just kind of let the trip take over, it would take me on a trip and like I could, it would, you know, I would see all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah. Did you see anything that wasn't actually there or was it just distortions of things that were there? I think, yeah, I did see some kind of stuff that wasn't there, like in the sky. Like I definitely saw stuff that like wasn't there, but it was almost kind of a distortion of things that were already there. Um, I didn't see any like unicorns or anything. I didn't like fall into a black hole and like see some crazy craziness. It wasn't anything like that, but um, it was just very interesting because I got like this, I felt like a, like a, I just felt like a hippie. Like I was just talking so much like hippie speak, like, Oh man, dude! Everyone needs to try this, man. And like, <laughs> man, Donald Trump needs to take some mushrooms, man. That would yeah. calm him down, you know, like stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> but it, but but in actuality, it just um, I was just like really happy. Like it was just really cool. I don't know. Was it spiritual at all? It, it, it actually was. Um, How so? In a way that it it was very primal. Like I was like, this is an experience that millions of people have experienced in the past. This used to be part of lots of kind of like religious rituals and stuff like that. Yeah. And for whatever reason in today's modern society, at least in America, it's very frowned upon um, and illegal, which is kind of ridiculous to me because I'm not hurting anybody. I'm eating a mushroom that grows out of the ground, you know, yeah, exactly. it's very weird. But um, yeah, it felt very primal and almost like I felt like I was kind of connected to, connected to some kind of ancient, ancient power or something. It was very, very strange. Like I felt kind of like, wow, the majority of people living on earth right now have never tried this, but there's a lot, but there are tons of people that have tried this and I kind of felt connected to them in some way. It's yeah. very weird. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's funny because I pretty much have the exact same experience or like the ancient thing yeah is a thing for sure um isn't it weird that everyone kind of gets that not everyone but i mean yeah. isn't it kind of strange that 
when you take that, your brain goes into this place and you almost kind of have this connection. It is weird. It is weird. Like tapping into some greater hive mind. Yeah. Um, Very strange. Yeah, it is weird. That's cool, man. That's cool that you had that experience. <laughs> yeah. And Amsterdam was like the perfect place to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, for the record, I did mine in international waters. Uh, there we go. Yeah. And it's kind of cool. So you're on a boat. No, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> fucking with the people at home. I, I, I was going to say, I was like, I was like, we're on a cruise or something. I like, did it on land where it's illegal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I didn't do it in Amsterdam. <laughs> yeah. I, See, that was the other thing too. I was kind of a pussy. I like didn't want to ever like do it in America or yeah, whatever. That's or, true. And I never like had the opportunity presented. Like if someone was like, Hey man, want to do this? I would be, uh, I would have been, I don't know, more open, but it wasn't like I was seeking it out. Right. Whereas no, in Amsterdam, me and my friend were like, let's do this. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, well, hey, folks, back home. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back um, with Andrew on the Logical Insanity Podcast. Sit After tight. sponsors. We back. We back. Ba-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-
But there, I feel like there's a lot less like hooking up there that like people are always like, oh yeah, dude, I'm gonna bring a girl back to my tent tonight. Like it doesn't like 99 times out of 100 it doesn't happen like that because everyone's gross and sweaty and covered in mud and like <laughs> not everyone's like uh, yeah go back to my tent <laughs> yeah sleep on this thermo rest yeah but um but i've been to a lot of a lot of small ones and a lot of big ones and uh the largest being the holy grail tomorrowland in belgium i don't know if you're familiar with that i've heard of it it's the coolest music festival I've ever been to. For real? It's amazing. And the hype is hype is real, but it's all worth it. Like it's not all hype at all. Damn. That's crazy. It's really It's called Tomorrowland. It's called Tomorrowland. Okay. It's in a tiny town called Boom, Belgium. It's right outside of Brussels. Okay. And the population there is smaller than the like I think the population is like like ten thousand or something. It's very, very small. It might even be wow. smaller than that. And 180,000 people come to the festival. Whoa. 180,000 people? Over three, over four days, yes. Wow. I don't know if they count that as like 60,000 one day, 60,000 next, or if it's like 180,000 total, but I know that the number that they officially give out is 180,000. Okay. So it's much, A much lot larger than the population of this tiny town. Wow. That's crazy. So yeah, it's really, really crazy. And imagine... Disney World made into a music festival. So like that level of like decoration and organization and cleanliness. Whoa. In a music festival. That's that was what blew me away. Cuz I'd been to a lot, like quite a few, and I'd seen some that were terribly organized, I'd seen some that were pretty well organized. I'd never seen one that clean, which was astounding. Because most of the time you're getting like porta potties, that kind of thing. They have these cool like uh these cool flushable portable toilets there so like when you're going to the bathroom like there's like an actual toilet you can use people like as when you leave the toilet there's a guy that goes in and cleans it like there's like constantly people cleaning the bathrooms constantly people cleaning the eating areas it's very very interesting okay so it's clean yeah are there other attractions other than music um not too much to be honest there's there's lots of like international kind of stuff like lots of really good food there so there's lots tons yeah, of um exactly. international food so there's like a big there's a couple big food court areas where um you've got uh food from all over and uh it's really good actually the food's really 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 good but there's it's pretty much all about the music to be honest and there's actually 15 stages so at any given point, there is 15, well, actually, and there's, I think there's like three or four secret stages. So at any given point, there's probably like 19 or 20 areas where you could go listen to all types of electronic music, which is really crazy. That's insane. Yeah. Damn, what's the craziest thing you saw there? Hmm. Craziest thing I saw there? Probably this couple. So I was at this really small stage called the Lipton Leaf stage, and it was really cool because it was over... The la- there's a giant lake in the middle of the c- in the fairgrounds or whatever you want to call it and this stage is basically an island that they've created in the middle of the lake and the top of it is probably um, the stage itself is probably about maybe a little bit bigger than this room it's very very small that's really small yeah and so it's yeah. probably uh, maybe give it like maybe a little okay maybe I'm exaggerating maybe a little bit bigger than this maybe maybe like 25 feet by 25 feet maybe 30 by 30 it's pretty small it's like kind of like a square up top and there's like a dj and they're playing like uh some like house music and stuff but i saw this couple this white dude they look like a caveman and i'm not exaggerating he had long hair he's wearing a loincloth he was wearing like gladiator type sandals that wrapped around all the way up to your knees yeah and his lover his partner whoever don't know if they were married but um was this a uh, black lady with a mohawk. And I'm not talking about a faux hawk. I'm talking about a real mohawk where it was shaved on the sides. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and an Afro mohawk in the middle. Wow. And she was also dressed like a cave woman. And she had a loincloth and very scantily clad upper top, whatever you want to call it, bikini top thing. Yeah. And they were just dancing like nobody was watching. Wow. In the middle of this tiny little stage. In the middle of the water. In the middle of the water, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. It was 
it wasn't like the thing where it was like, oh, I saw some dude like do coke out of a girl's butthole or something. But it was just that was just the weirdest thing, and I couldn't stop watching them. Yeah, and they didn't care if anyone's watching. And, oh yeah, and the and they and the caveman guy was drinking out of a pitcher of beer. <laughs> so he had an entire pitcher. <laughs> That's such a funny detail. Yeah, he doesn't even need a cup. He just got a pitcher of beer. <laughs> exactly. Fuck yeah. He got a pitcher and he was just drinking it to himself. And sharing it with his with his girlfriend or whatever, whoever she was. Oh, that's hilarious. But I kept, I saw them a few more times throughout the weekend as well. Oh, wow. And every time I saw them, I just smiled because they, they were just the epitome of not giving a fuck. That's awesome. They were wearing loincloths. And I don't think he was wearing underwear underneath. Like, I'm pretty sure it was just a loincloth. They were getting real <laughs> primitive. <laughs> to say the least. That's, that's probably awesome. the best way to put it. Dude, that's so money. That's awesome. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of crazy things that go on at those festivals. Definitely. People yeah. come out of the woodwork that you don't even know exist. Really? Yeah, just people that are like, where do you live? Like, where where did you come from? Like, just like weird hippies that I'm like, where did you even buy those pants? Like, those look like a quilted patchwork of like drug rugs you know what i'm talking about like drug rugs, <laughs> yeah the sweaters like, yeah yeah like it looks like they made a like pants out of like quilting those together like where did you buy those like gypsy pants yeah like, like some <laughs> alpaca farmer in peru made them yeah. some like native incan yeah that's hilarious and they're like the crotch goes down to their knees and you're like why are you wearing these like aladdin pants like what are you doing with your life uh, it looks cozy though those definitely. aladdin pants can look pretty cozy i think definitely <laughs> that's awesome yeah but yeah so anyways definitely some weird times music festivals but you um but on another note kind of like traveling you get to it's cool because it's kind of like a global gathering mm. and since it's in that tiny town like if you go to a music festival for example i just went to ultra in miami lots of people that go are locals you know lots of people live in miami so it's kind of like the thing oh cool you live in miami let's go to ultra or whatever or, yeah. or maybe they live close by right. but boom is such a tiny town in belgium that all, pretty much everyone in the town i think goes to it because it's such a spectacle and i think they all get to go for free because it's mm. such an invasion of their life but um <laughs> yeah it, it really bet. is i bet it's crazy but um it's like once a year their life just gets taken over by this weird festival but um but i think everyone in the town gets to go for free or very very discounted yeah and um but it's cool because everyone travels in from all over the world that like i said like new zealanders australian people um japanese people korean people americans canadian i mean south americans like it's so cool because rich africans yeah yeah and and you know indian people yeah. you know and it's cool because uh you know everyone's there for that you know it's not like you're just running in like oh what are you doing here like everyone's there for that so it's kind of cool that's pretty crazy yeah it's a weird experience i wonder if there's ever been a child born at tomorrow world that's a great that's a great question that's a hmm born there maybe probably could you imagine being like eight and a half months pregnant <laughs> And it's definitely frowned upon, but going to Tomorrow World is it Tomorrowland? Tomorrow, whatever. Yeah, so, so Tomorrow World was an offshoot of it made by the same people, but okay. that was actually in Atlanta, which is crazy enough. Really crazy enough, yeah, outside of Atlanta, where um, that already happened. It happened for three years, and the third year was a total shit show. It rained, you might have heard about it, but it was like a total mud fest. Okay. And like all the transportation, like people, so a lot of people stay in hotels. They don't want to camp and stuff. And like all the buses that are supposed to come in, all the shuttles to take people back to their oh, hotels, yeah. like couldn't get into the festival grounds because it was so muddy. And they had outsourced their shuttles. So it was like another company doing it. And they were like, fuck this. All of our drivers are getting stranded in the mud. We're out. So like the festival itself did had no way of like getting these people to their hotels. And it was a total, total terrible situation. They had to refund a lot of people their money. Um, they basically said anyone who wasn't camping on the last day couldn't come into the festival. There's no way to accommodate them. It was a really bad situation. But I was camping, so I had a great time. <laughs> That's and not hilarious. to say fuck them, but uh, I still had a great time. It was really fun. <laughs> yeah. Did you get your money back? No, because I was camping. Right, yeah. Um, you got to but see you know the messed up thing was is so like for example, if I bought a ticket and then ended up not going and selling my ticket, I got a refund, but the person who actually used my ticket didn't, you know? 
Yeah, that's crazy. And lots of people did that because it was a sold out kind of. I actually I don't know if it sold out because there's a lot of people that could go to it, but it might have sold out towards the end. So it's kind of messed up. That's pretty crazy, man. Yeah, that's and crazy. to make things worse, the way that they had to do the refund, they had to refund everyone's money, and then charge them for the first two days. So all these people thought that they were getting a full refund. Went out and bought stuff. They were like, "Oh, sick! I got four hundred bucks that I thought I didn't have." No. And then they got charged two hundred and fifty or whatever. <laughs> so to make God. situations worse, and tomorrow world was terrible at communication. They were not letting people know what was going on. It was a terrible situation. So needless to say, it didn't happen last year, and it won't happen this year. And who Are knows? They, it'll float over, come back. Yeah, That's which sucked because it was actually really cool. They should have gotten out of damn almanac and seen <laughs> you know oh it rains during april or yeah. you know what i mean like or whenever it was yeah like, and that was a that was a weird thing when i went to tomorrow land it was so cool because all the walkways are really well done like it wasn't like at tomorrow world it was just basically like dirt walkways so as soon as it rained it became a mud pit you know yeah. but these in tomorrow land it was like they had these giant metal plates that they would set out if it was over mud and like that that festival ground pretty much the main use for it is Tomorrowland. So they do actually have a lot of like permanent walkways and stuff. But the crazy thing is it reminds me like of Disney World, kinda like I said. Yeah. But Disney World's like a permanent thing. You know, like it happens all the time. You can go visit anytime. But Tomorrowland is like a once a year thing. Yeah, that's it awesome. Happens. It's really crazy. That's incredible. Yeah, it's like a global weird gathering of weirdos. Like Dude, the caveman. What if all of those same people who go to Tomorrowland just got on the same page and they decided one year, like, we're all going to go to Disney World at the same time and just crash Disney World? That'd be an amazing idea. Do you think they'd get kicked out or turned away or do you think I Disney World would, like, take their money? Well, I mean, Disney World kind of has their own capacities and stuff. So, I mean, if it if they, like, storm the gates, obviously we'd get in trouble. But, like... <laughs> I don't think that would go over well, but if everyone like legally bought their own tickets and kind of did their own thing, the yeah. problem there I think would be there'd be so much, no, we should do it this weekend. Oh, well, I can't do this. You know, like just annoying. Yeah. Like someone, someone really powerful in that scene would have to put a stake in the ground saying, we're going this weekend. Yeah. It's gotta be like a, it'll be a year out. We'll all decide. Exactly. Bring, invite loincloth, mohawk girl. Exactly. You know, like we're all going to show up just freak, freaked out, like letting our freak flag fly and just take over Space Mountain at Disney World. <laughs> yeah, it would be weird because there's so many kids. I feel like Epcot would be a cool place to do that because like yeah. Epcot's kind of like the adult. International. Adult. Exactly. Exactly. That's yeah. hilarious. I have a friend that works for Disney World and she said like, she was like, eh, Epcot's kind of boring. And she's like, go as an adult. It's really cool. You can like drink around the world and stuff. And I'm like, oh. That sounds cool. I I bet. I bet. Yeah. What is uh your friend who works for Disney World, how does she like that? Um, she just started. She likes it a lot. She's always wanted to work there from like a long time. I don't I don't know how long, but for like a long time that's been her like dream. And she works in a restaurant there. And so her like major was in like hospitality stuff. So um she really likes it. Obviously there's a lot of weird rules about Disney World that are strange. Yeah. And um She's actually one of my friends that goes to a lot of music festivals and stuff too, so she kind of has to keep a lot, a lot of that kind of secretive sort of from her coworkers and bosses, I guess, mm -hmm. just because of the afraid of the, I don't know, blowback or whatever. But you gotta um, keep it PG. Yeah, I gotta keep it actually PG. probably G. Yeah, I didn't know this, but if you post a picture of the backstage area, like anywhere that guests can't see anywhere on social media, you get fired immediately. Oh wow. Yeah, like any kind of area that a guest shouldn't be able to normally see, fired. That's crazy. Yeah. They can be cutthroat, though. You totally can. Because they've got to line out the door, mm -hmm. stack her resumes. It's a very, very weird company to work for. I don't think I'd want to do it, but hey, to each his own. Whatever. I knew a guy who did it. I actually just did a podcast with him yesterday. Really? Um, yeah. My friend Keeb used to work there, and he huh. was saying that it was the best job he's ever had. Really? That's he awesome. loved it. He said it was the most magical place. Like, they go to extreme lengths to make like people happy for especially sure. kids for sure especially kids yeah i definitely have heard a lot of stuff about that like how like at the restaurants and stuff like everyone's trained to just make everyone's experience amazing yeah so it's supposed to be the happiest place on earth so they have to like live up to that you know yeah it's, kind of, it's, it's weird but it's amazing i would never you know what's weird is people people who go to Disney World for their honeymoon. Yeah. Run the other way. Those people are crazy. Those people are crazy. 
A thousand percent. Couldn't agree more. There's so many people in the in this world too that that I'm just like. I'm glad you guys are together and you guys are happy together, but I will have nothing to do with you. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm glad you found each other. Try not to make too many people who are weird as fuck like you guys, and just stay in your lane. You exactly. Know? Just exactly. Don't 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 be in my life. I'm gl- I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you. You guys are nice on your own, but holy shit, you're weird. And please go away. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like very confusing people that are just like doing their own thing. I guess. Well, yeah, and I feel like Disney people and cruise people are kind of the same mm, people. Disney cruise people, ultimate. I ultimate know combo that's the that. ultimate. Like, hey, ISIS, here's an idea. Like, <laughs> point, like, <laughs> you know, like, how about you start targeting cruise ships, man? Those people suck. It's amazing. Those people are the worst. <laughs> just cruiseaholics that just go on cruises like every chance they can get. Yeah, like just people who drive people that they drive a Honda Odyssey. <laughs> you know minivan people yeah and you know <laughs> that's amazing i mean at the same time you need you need fertile people to make more people yeah but uh, i think we got enough we definitely have enough i think we got i think we're good on people for we, a while i would argue we have too many <laughs> yeah yeah we're good hey got people stop so this yeah i mean this is just a message to all the people out there making more people stop yeah. Stop. One's good. Replace yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And, I like that. You know, like, yeah. One per customer. We don't want to have, yeah, we, we don't want to have to get a China rule in. Yeah. Here. And like, oh, there's all these people like, oh, don't you want to have kids? Like, stop encouraging them. Yeah. <laughs> They've decided not to. Hey, how about you adopt Chill. one? How about you, how about yeah. you adopt one? Recycle. Yeah. You know, you don't need to just bring a whole new, that's wasteful. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? There's already kids who need a place that's to go. That's true. People are weird about that, though. Yeah. Like, they want to bring their, People want to have their genetic code replicated. I think that's a primal thing. For it's sure. very, it's to the core of biology. Yeah, it's like it's, survive it's and is. replicate. Exactly. Like those are the two things. So I don't know. Yeah. You want to make more little things that are like you, which is weird because people don't think about it like that, but that's such so, that's so like egotistical. I feel like narcissistic. You're like, yeah. Like, I want to make more things just like me because I'm fucking awesome. I'm gonna teach it the way I am. Yeah, we're gonna do things my way. He's gonna be my little, also. my little buddy, my yeah. little sluggo. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna play baseball. And then it's a girl, and it's like you're gonna play softball. You know what I mean? Like it's just fitting a square peg in a round hole. I want to do ballet, daddy. Hey, no, we're gonna play catch. We're gonna play catch. Or like parents that are trying to raise their kids like a hundred percent gender neutral, like. That I, like I respect that, but at the same time, it's like if your kid wants to do ballet, like let him. <laughs> you know, like yeah. you're just saying that because all the other girls in your class want to do ballet. You're gonna, you're gonna do pottery. That's that's asexual. The boys and girls can do that. Yeah, I think uh, I was just talking with someone the other day who announced that they're having a uh, another another child, and this time they're not gonna. They already have two. They have a boy and a girl, and the third one they're gonna just wait until um, it's born to like see what the gender is. You know. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking how awesome it would be if they released a name first. Like it's it's gonna be Taylor, or like a yep. like a uh, asexual name, name, you yeah. know. Um, just kept the world guessing. Yeah, kept themselves guessing. Yeah, but then there's names. Pat. <laughs> yeah, but then there's names like Kelly, where it's like, mm. if you're a guy named Kelly, I'm sorry, but like, go fuck yourself. Change <laughs> change your name to Arthur. Get out of here, Kelly Slater. Yeah, yeah, I don't know who that is, but fuck you. <laughs> He's like a surfer, I think. Okay. I hope you scrape your knee. I hope you fall and scrape your knee, Kelly Slater. <laughs> not really, but Kelly Slater. I don't know, man. Some some of them I'm not buying. You know. Mm-hmm. Or when a girl's named Carson, same thing. It's yeah. like yeah, that's a boy like, name. That's a boy name, bitch. I Stand feel like, down. Yeah, I feel like it's um these weird suburban moms that are like really rich and like they want to name their kid like something. I'm gonna name my kid Brandon, and this it's a is, girl or something. This is Skyler. Yeah. Yeah, very weird names. It's this always, is Caden. She's a girl. <laughs> it's always like, um, what's another one? Like Shane is another one that's like kind of oh, recent. Heard a I girl feel named like Shane. No, no, no. no I'm, I'm talking a guy named. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, or like double names. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Double names just make me infuri- infuriated. Yeah. This is Michael Carson. It's like, yeah. Go fuck yourself. Choose one. Yeah. I think I've talked about double names on the podcast before where it's like, <laughs> just one of your pet I met a guy who was like, I'm John Henry. I was like, okay, 
have, have fun have a good life i hope yeah. you get blow, blow up on that isis cruise if ship you're, if you're paying. that disney cruise ship that we just gave isis, <laughs> the, ISIS the idea to go ship. attack what if there was a cruise ship just full of isis members hey you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna rephrase that because it would be a terrible tragedy if isis attacked a disney cruise ship there's a lot of kids that's very true that would be quite sad they should attack a carnival cruise ship 100 percent. because there's less kids and more people who are more fatties on on uh, motorized scooters. I got the drink package, Shauna. I got the unlimited drink package. Hey, don't forget the sunscreen and the Tevas. <laughs> the Tevas. <laughs> oh man. Want to go for another slice of pizza or maybe a bit of mac and cheese? <laughs> the chocolate fountain sure is great. I stuck my finger in it last night. <laughs> don't tell. <laughs> You know what's crazy? Is pepperoni pizza and chocolate fountain are pretty good, actually. It's got kind of got a tangy, tangy aspect to it. I had one too many strawberry daiquiris last night and thought that'd be a great idea. Dude, it's just terrible. Like people who buy the drink package and then create more people oh on the god. cruise ship. Oh god! Think about that, dude. Think about how many lame people are are <clears throat> procreated on a cruise ship. Yeah. It's terrible. We need to stop it. It needs yeah. to be. It, you know what? You need to. You know, like your ticket on on board. One of the prereqs for getting the ticket is a vasectomy. <laughs> it's like we'll let you on this cruise ship. That like, would actually be we'll let amazing. You. you can you can participate in the buffet. You can even do an excursion in the Dominican Republic. We're gonna give you a checklist of approved events. It's gonna be very structured, and you won't have to think. We'll right. let you on this cruise ship, but we gotta snip your vast deference. <laughs> So you can Just never have a kid. Tubes tied and you're good to go. Yep. Mandatory abortions for cruise ship people. <laughs> uh, that's what I, I'm calling it. Under my administration. Have you, ever, have you ever been on a cruise? Never. I'm talking mad shit about a cruise and I've never been on a cruise. And I see why that's hypocritical. People out in the world, I get it. I get why that's not good. But at the same time, I have a point. You and, do. And you know what I and mean. Those those points are unfound. Those points are not unfounded. I, yeah, I agree. I've been on two cruises. I will admit they are fun, but you do see the most terrible people there that are just the worst. Yeah, it's just just cookie monsters, donut monsters that are just <laughs> just those people that make those types of sounds. It's like the um, cruise ships are for people who don't know how to like think independently enough to like just go with the flow and plan hmm. their own trip kind of like that yeah it's true see could, yeah like a like a cruise ship type person is a cookie cutter person who would never just basic. say they 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 would never just say fuck all i'm gonna go pack a backpack and go yeah that's not how they work they're they're hr people they're hmm. like people who like very like, don't think about it process oriented people and that's, that's okay. a good way of putting it. Yeah, the that, world needs that. The world that's needs true. That. that is okay. Some like it's weird because sometimes I find myself being that person where I'm like, I don't want to think about this. I just want to like pay the money and do it. But sometimes I'm I'm the opposite, like total opposite. Like I want to do, like, like you know, just not be a basic bitch, basically. You know, true. Because I feel like a carnival is a total basic bitch thing. I mean a car a cruise a carnival cruise oh okay <laughs> a carnival don't go to carnivals <laughs> carnival all basic bitches go to carnivals carnivals good <laughs> carnival cruises bad yeah that's awesome any place that serves funnel cake i'm good with exactly. you know although i feel like there's a little bit of a middle middle of that venn diagram carnival cruises and carnivals like there's a little like the funnel cake archetype of yeah. person yeah. is kind of the same type of American and that goes on the cruise ship, you know, it's like true. the like pre-diabetic um, <laughs> person who like lost everything in 08. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the people who are the reason that the housing crisis happened, you know, exactly. like, Oh, you guys are the Just worst. Just Americans. It's when like people a, think of Americans, they think of those people. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately. hundred percent. And those people fuck and make more people. And they that's do. an issue we got to address they at some do. point because Dude, we can't handle more people, man. We can't handle more people. All the jobs are going to be robots. It's true. It's very true. So the world, you know what the world doesn't need? Another fucking Uber driver. All right. So, so, <laughs> wow. so stop making more, putting it. Ma ma stop making more people. That's true. <laughs> but um, to, but to that said, that said, congratulations to my friend who's got one on the way. I, it's going to work out. 
exactly exactly i'm Same happy here. for taylor or Same kelly here. or some yeah. androgynous uh asexual name yeah i was gonna say um to go i didn't know if you wanted to talk about cruises anymore yeah no keep going sorry sorry i know no no you're good i was gonna ask you what inspired you to make a podcast because i know that you started it um it was it was interesting i was in when you you initially texted me um whenever you first started the podcast and said hey man i made a podcast and i'm like cool i'll listen to it and i listened to like the first episode yeah. and i actually on soundcloud i have like the soundcloud pro or whatever and where you right. can download stuff yeah. and i i was about to i was in paris i was about to fly home so i was like oh sick i'm gonna like listen to these and i put them in a playlist to download them and i could have sworn i did and then when i got on the plane i'm like okay cool i'm gonna listen to graham's podcast and then like they weren't there and i'm like damn it so i was like pissed but then uh but then like a couple of days ago you hit me up but anyways what what inspired you to make uh what inspired you to make the podcast um attention seeking behavior for one that's yeah. one of them it's, um it's not a bad thing all the time it's not it's not i mean people people have different outlets for attention seeking behavior right i mean some people are destructive with it and some people are constructive with it so very true that's that's what i've been trying to get better at with my life is just like i call it like mental ap keto you know what i mean like yeah. where, where where you take the circumstances around you and instead of fighting back directly you just kind of push that bitch to the side and, hmm. and have your way with it based off the like other people's inertia you know how like yeah. keto the like martial art where like it's not about striking it's not about grappling it's about like using the the attacker's momentum to like yeah so to maneuver it out of the way right so attention seeking behavior making a positive out of that this is what the like podcast that. is i guess that's cool yeah that's really cool that's um because i've actually been thinking for a while just because i listen to a decent amount of podcasts thinking yeah. about making my own podcast for a little while too one thing that i've been really inspired like you said uh dr chris ryan mm -hmm. and uh like going and just visiting people that i know from around the country and around the world and just like tell letting them tell their story doing a cool little Absolutely. podcast so I feel like that is one, that's one interesting thing is like everyone starts off as a baby. Like we were just talking about like, every, you know, your parents bring you in, they give you a name, you know, like you are now this and, you know, you grow up and throughout whatever circumstances you experience, that's who you become. Like you become a person. Obviously, genetics plays a role in that. But like, I feel like if I can give an outlet for people to tell kind of their life story, it'll just be kind of interesting because everyone... Yeah, has a totally different upbringing and then you know adolescent life and adult life and all that it's kind of a cool outlet to tell stories and all that that's exactly it man people are interesting yeah celebrate interesting in their own people. way yeah exactly and that's that's kind of like i know earlier we were hating on like cruise ship people and i think the reason i feel so strongly about that type of like boring person mm -hmm. is because like i think of pe boring people as like Fuck boring people because it's a loss of potential to be cool people. That's yeah. Like yeah. when you take an easy option and float the mm. mainstream, you're doing yourself a disservice. Exactly. And, uh, I, it sounds harsh, but like I don't have as much respect for, like I call them neutrons, like people who aren't mm. bad or good, but just kind of like hanging out. Um, yeah. Which I is, was definitely kind of that type of person for a while. A little, I felt a little like neutronic. Yeah, I think my. It's kind of weird, but I think my. My parents are a little bit that way. I think parents kind of get into that groove a little bit too. Just, just like ah, we've had kids, we have our jobs, you know. So we're just, we're just gonna kind of float, float down. Let it, you know. It's kind of a weird. Yeah. But um, but yeah, that like traveling definitely helped me get out of that. Traveling is a huge part. Like yeah, it's the best education in people in the world, and definitely super important. And that's a weird thing is, you know, kind of being an au pair, like being being able to see kids from another place. That's one thing you I feel like when you travel and backpack and stuff, you don't see too many kids. And if you do, you don't really get to like interact with them that much because they're normally with their parents and it'd be kind of weird to be like, hey, little buddy, <laughs> yeah. get away from that. Get away from that creepy backpack. He smells. He hasn't taken a shower in three days. He's got all of his shit on his back. Like, <laughs> you know, you don't get to you don't get to feel that. Yeah, and that's one cool thing about being an au pair. It's kind of weird at first because you know you're uh, you're like a babysitter. It's not yeah. the coolest job, but absolutely, it's cool because you get to live with a family, so you get to see how they live, and like you get to 
see how they raise their kids and how the kids are. And the, I think one of the biggest things I realized with the, especially last uh, summer with the three kids, they were all almost like one year apart. So those parents were getting busy, like one after the other, the other, the other. Just, you know, just, you know, just. Cream exactly. filled mommy. Exactly. <laughs> and they were just boop, 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 like pretty much one year. And they were all, all three kids were like so different. Huh. It's weird because you kind of think like, oh, this kid is like this because of his parents. Well, yeah, his genetics were from his parents, but like the way that they raised that kid didn't necessarily make him turn out the way he turned out. You know, like it's weird because like the youngest one, he was crazy. Like he was always super happy or crying. Like he was like just bipolar. Like it was like there was never really a medium where he was just like calm. It was like he was either super, super happy eating candy or something or he was sad that his, you know, crying that his brother took his toy or whatever. Right. And uh, and he could kind of play by himself, which is kind of funny. And then like the the middle one, he like he never really wanted to be by himself. He wanted to always be with his brothers, but his brothers sometimes didn't want to be with him, so that would make him sad, you know. What about the oldest? And the oldest one, um, he could kind of play by himself sometimes, but it, typically he wanted to kind of be like the ruler of the situation and like make his younger brothers do what he wanted. So like if they if they were gonna play something, he wanted to be the one to decide. Gotcha. Okay, here, here's my question, right? So, like, it's, it's a two-parter. A, one, how does one become an au pair? Yes. And the second one is, like, I don't know. I've known you for, uh, what, over four or five years? Like, dude, what, you're not qualified to raise kids. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing being an au pair? That's my second question. That's a great, yeah, that's a, that's a very great, valid question. So, <laughs> so point A, um, you can go on a multitude of websites um so definitely back pages um yeah craigslist no <laughs> dark web <laughs> yeah <laughs> no so there's a couple cool websites the one that i've used for both times i've been in au pair twice now one in italy one in spain okay. um is au pair world.com it's pretty cool um okay so you just find people through the internet you make yourself available yeah it's almost like a dating English. website like if like to to break it down in the most simplest terms it's like a dating website you build a profile right. they build a profile Based on criteria. Background like, check. Um, How's that work? So it's kind of weird. Like there are some services where you sign up through almost like an au pair agency and they pair you with a family. Right. They do a background they, check. They au pair you with a family. They au pair you. Yeah, exactly. And um, But for the family that I was with the first time in Italy, uh, the parents are both lawyers. So who knows if they did their own kind of background check on me? Probably. They probably did. Like an Interpol probably they yeah. they probably did which i was cool with but um what they really wanted was like references so like for example i was like in boy scouts so i had like one of my old boy scout leaders like write a letter of recommendation some of my previous employers wrote a recommendation okay. i worked at a summer camp for a few summers there and stuff so that one. was a big one yeah having some experience and then also at my um at like my at the church that i went to growing up and stuff I used to work in the child care center sometimes like for money when I was in high school because yeah. like it's one of the only jobs that I could like yeah. do or get or whatever. And right. so so I had done that, kind of taking care of some kids. I'd babysat my neighbors in the past. So like I kind of had done some stuff, but never anything this intense where I was living with a family for months at a time. So that wild. was kind of nerve wracking at first, but um, got kind of thrown into it. And uh, yeah, so that kind of answered both questions in one. But um, yeah. but yeah, au pair world. I definitely recommend it. Kind of sketchy, but the cool thing is, is um, because like a dating website, kind of like I said, you don't really know these people. But definitely recommend if you're looking into this, skyping with the family a couple times, so you get to talk to them face to face. That's a cool thing you can do. Meet the kids over Skype. You know, that's kind of cool. See if they, you know, see if you could hang out with them for multiple hours at a time a day <laughs> yeah obviously it's going to be weird kids are weird on skype they don't know you you're a stranger so it's going to be a weird conversation anyways right but um but yeah uh but once i did it the first time getting it the second time was much easier because i had experience with it you know like it was yeah i already like, proven that i could it's like renting out your apartment for airbnb the second the first time is just the hard one exactly you know and the second time you're like, oh, I've done this. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's cool, man. Yeah. That's cool. So was it sort of a um a means to travel? Most definitely. Yeah. It was um so one of my friends, uh, Brooke, um, she was an au pair. She decided like, I'm gonna do this thing. And uh she was in London and I was te- messaging her on WhatsApp and asking her all these questions. I'm like, Oh, that's so cool. I was like, 
such an awesome experience. You're like getting to like live there. You know, it's not like you're just out there on a vacation. Like you're not just there on a permanent or a temporary yeah. thing. You're kind of like living there for a little bit. That's so cool. And um, so I was messaging her. She's like, yeah, you should do it too. And I was kind of like, what? No, like guys can't be au pairs because I'd only heard of girl au pairs, you know, kind of makes sense. Right. Like yeah. Because are the girls are, girls are babysitters and yeah. guys aren't really. And you have that motherly instinct and all that. Typically, but, um, yeah. but I started looking, she was like, no, seriously, I've met a couple guy au pairs here and like, it's definitely a thing. And, um, you know, growing up, I only had one brother, so I never really like dealt with like little girls. So I definitely didn't want to have a family with little girls and that's just weird. Yeah. So I definitely was looking for a family with boys, number one. And, um, the cool thing was, is like lots of families are not looking for a male au pair because it's kind of weird. You know, the yeah. dad's kind of weird about it. A lot dudes of times have, I think dudes have dicks. They do. Dudes. Yeah. They just do. And, um, <laughs> yeah, it's just weird. Like I don't want a weird dude hanging out with the kids, but like a girl, it's I don't like want that human with a penis here. Yeah. Fuck that. Gross. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, uh, so, uh, you know, I realized that a family that's cool enough and open-minded enough to have a guy au pair is going to be a cool family, typically. Yeah. Which is kind of a weird thing because a lot of I've heard, I've met and talked with lots of female au pairs, and um, lots of times you just have like girl mom drama. Like the mom is like way too into like, okay, so what are you doing today? Where are you going to take them? What are you going to like? The mom is like way too because it's like a womanly. They like almost don't trust them, but with like the guy. They're kind of like already cool with the guy taking care of their kids. So they're kind of like, yeah, go to the pool, whatever. You know, they're like, they're more, they're more open. They're just like, okay, we've hired you. We trust you enough. Do your job. You know, that's cool. So did you have to have a certain amount of like things that you did or like a schedule that you presented to the parents, like a um, plan or did there not, have to be a plan? Yeah, that's a good question. So, um, so I've done it twice and they were both very different when I was in Italy it was not a very traditional pair experience because um, this family was extremely wealthy and they had, well, not that that's weird. Lots of au pair families are wealthy, but yeah. this family, they lived in the very middle of Milan, right next to the Duomo. I don't know if you've been to Milan, but it's this giant cathedral. It's like, if you ever like look up, just Google Milan, like the picture of the Duomo is like, right. it's like the thing you see. Yeah. It's like when the little guys are like selling statues outside, like that's what they're selling, you know, like yeah, in yeah. Paris, they're selling the Statue of Liberty. I mean, the Eiffel Tower, not the Statue yeah. of Liberty, but um, they sell that. So anyways, we lived, I could walk there in 10 minutes. It's cool. And they have this little apartment in the middle of the city, but in the on the weekends, kind of like people who live in New York, I feel like they want to get out of the city on the weekends. So they had kind of like little vacation houses. Okay. So, but during the summer, they wanted the kids to spend most of the time in these vacation houses. So basically on the weekends we would drive up to these houses and then they would just leave me there with the kids for the week and the parents would go back into the city and work. So I was like wow. the dad and they had a housekeeper that made all of our food, cleaned the house, um, took care of the kids when I wasn't supposed to. So like she put them to bed and like showered them and like stuff like that. Right. And, um, and then we also had in one of their houses like a butler. Whoa. <laughs> which was weird did he <laughs> wear weird. white did he wear white gloves and he did he had a uniform he had the the suit with the not white the gloves? american butler with the tuxedo he was almost looking more like a naval captain or something <laughs> <laughs> he had like tassels on his on his shoulders and stuff no like, way i'm dead serious i'm be i'm not being facetious like this was a real thing and he, um, and it was so cool. It was the weirdest. It was kind of awkward because. Yeah. I was going to say, what's the au pair to Butler dynamic yeah, like? Yeah. Right. Cause I'm not his employer, but he had to treat me like I was a member of the family kind of, cause I kind of was. So like at meal times, you take his white glove, we'd have our first course, which is probably be like spaghetti or like some pasta or whatever. And he'd come around my right shoulder with his white glove, take the plate, come around my left, sh my, my left shoulder with his other glove and put a new plate. And then he'd come and serve us the next course. Like we literally had like courses. Like I felt like royalty. I felt like royalty. And then after lunch, the kids would go like watch TV and I would go sit in the like sitting room of this house that had like marble floors and all this. Like it was like amazing. And the butler would come and offer me a coffee. Like it was ridiculous. That's insane. Yeah. And I'm just like, dude, I live in like... Norcross, Georgia, like this tiny little, like in like a normal house. Like now I've got like a butler, like what? Wow. And how old were the kids? 
In Italy, they were um, six and eight. Okay. This is pretty good ages. You can yeah. tell them like, hey, don't climb that. Yeah. And you, th- it's cool because like, I think once a kid gets over like five, they kind of start to, you really do see their personality more. Yeah. And like when a kid's like three, they don't have much personality. They're kind of, you're just kind of like, this is a weird little human. You got to like help him live. <laughs> like you yeah. gotta like feed him and like <laughs> change his, di- you know, I don't know, probably right. trained by then, I guess. But yeah. So it's, yeah. That's cool, man. So where, so this vacation home, how far outside Milan was it? So there was a couple different ones. The one with the butler was um, only about like an hour and a half or maybe like two hours. But it was um, it was in this town called San Rufino. It was, yeah, a little countryside. And it literally had like a, like fields outside of it. Like it was kind of like a farmhouse. And it was crazy because this house that had the butler had an upstairs area where they used to have the slave quarters. Whoa. It was like an it was like a plantation home, basically. Like if you can imagine like a Georgian plantation home that had like slave quarters. Yeah. It was like that. It was like a big boxy house with a front porch and yeah. like big columns in the front. And uh Damn. yeah, and uh the butler and the housekeeper had to sleep upstairs in the slave quarters area. Obviously it, it had been renovated a little bit, but like I had like a guest bedroom and they had like slave quarters. It's very weird. That's an interesting what interesting a, dynamic for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And they would like serve me wine at the meals too, so I'd like get like wine drunk like at lunch. That's awesome. <laughs> the butler was probably like this dude. I'm just getting this guy drunk. I wonder what he truly thought about you. Like who's I don't this fucking American? I was very nice though. I tried yeah. to be as respectful as I could. Right, of course, of course. Because I thought it was very weird. Like I don't think even if I was that rich, like I don't think I would ever have a butler. Dude, they must have been rich. It was weird because it was like a combination of old money and new money. Like their parents, both mom and dad, the parents were both very wealthy. Right. And they were both lawyers as an occupation. So not only did they make a lot of money themselves, but they also had money before. That's crazy. But they were actually very modest compared to their cousins that I met, like their um their brothers and sisters. They were very snobby and um very preppy and uh kind of douchey. They were really nice to me, but like to the hired help, like sometimes they were kind of mean to them. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah, it's not cool at all. That's not cool. Yeah. Especially when, like, the housekeeper, like, typically is the one that's kind of, like, taking care of the kids and stuff when I wasn't there. Yeah. You know, if you're, like, mean to that person, what are they doing to your kids and behind closed doors, you know? Yeah, that's that's not good. Yeah. That's not good. Well, that's awesome, man. That's a unique experience, to say the least. Yeah. Spain was a lot different. The Spanish people never had... Um, they had a housekeeper, but um, she was more, I guess, treat like, treated more normally, I guess. Mm. And... um. She was really nice, and they treated her more kind of like family, but still, um, they treated me better, which is weird. That is weird. Yeah. That is weird. But, yeah. But the Italian family, definitely very different. Butler, yeah, strange. But <laughs> That's crazy, man. That's crazy. Well, yeah, I've, I've um, this is a total change of subject. Yeah, but, um, go for it. Um, I've been recording a lot late recently trying to get as much footage as i can um because i'm actually moving i'm actually moving to chicago oh, here nice. in a few months no way. so yeah that's moving, awesome moving up there with uh my girlfriend she got a job up there so nice i'm out of here i'm out that's of cool here. that's so. exciting stuff yeah man so that's New sort city. Of, i'm excited it's gonna be cold yeah at least yeah. you'll be like starting off summer yeah yeah have you ever been to Chicago? I know they have a music fest, like Lollapalooza. Isn't yeah, that I've never been there though. Um, okay. They have another one. Lollapalooza is um, like multi-genre kind of. You get like all bands, DJs, you get all kinds of stuff. There's another one that's called, I think, Spring Awakening that's in Chicago. It's uh, like all electronic music. And I have a friend that lives in Chicago and she's like really trying to get me to come to that. So maybe nice. I'll come. Dude, if you come through, let me know. Yeah, for sure. Let me know for sure. Yeah. Because I will go there and not know a soul, so other than yeah. my girlfriend. So I'll definitely be... It's an adventure. Yeah. It's going to be a big adventure. I'm excited. That's really so. cool. So what's what's next, man? What's next now that you're, you're back from your, the big adventure? Yeah. Yeah. See, that's the thing. And so 
Right now I'm working um, at the escape game place. Actually, I went. I when I came back this time, I nixed the gym job and I went full time okay. for the escape game place. And um, it's pretty exciting because it's kind of a small company, so it's almost like working for a startup. Right. So there's a lot of cool stuff that goes on, and um, it's been it's a really really fun job. It's uh. I bet it sounds cool. I laugh a lot. Like that's the cool thing. Like I realized, like my boss said that recently. She was like, "It's not the easiest job I've ever had, and it's not the, it's not the, I don't know, best paying, but it's the most fun, which is cool." Yeah. And I was like, I think that 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 means a lot. You know, like the level of happiness you have in your job is important. You know, so important. Yeah. It's it's what you do for most of your time. Exactly. If you're not enjoying it, and my coworkers are really cool, so like that's exciting too. Nice. So basically, um, in January, I basically kind of told my boss like. I need to make more money. If I can't make more money, I'm going to start looking at other places. It's just how it is. So they're kind of like, well, we'd love to like give you a raise and give you more responsibilities, but we're not really sure if you're going to like up and leave again kind of thing. Don't know if you're going to like go on some kind of crazy adventure. We don't want to like train you into some big new position and then you leave. So I kind of gave him a verbal commitment that I'd stick around for like a year. No more repairing for the next 12 months. Yeah. So this summer I'm going to Tomorrowland again. But that's about it. So I'm taking yeah. a nine day, really short trip to Europe. Yeah. So that'll be my big adventure for uh That's awesome. For the summer. But um so yeah, so basically my plan is work there for a while, save up. Um, but I've in the la in the past month or so, I've had a like like I said, kinda like I'd love to travel the world and kinda like do kind of like a podcast or do something cool, make videos, whatever. Yeah. And I'm absolutely. thinking like I'm just getting the itch, man, and it's already April, you know. So I'm thinking like sometime late this year or like early next year, I'm going to, I'm going to go on like a very big adventure. Like a, like I'm thinking like a year long kind of cool deal. I don't know. Dude, you do it. Do I'm it. I'm very itching for that. Like do a, it. and maybe even throw in an au pair thing in the middle to help like mitigate some of the costs, you know, like, yeah. like go on an adventure, like see a bunch of friends from somewhere, you know, people that have met and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Visit them do an au pair gig for a little while and then leave and go on more of an adventure. Like, dude, that's awesome. What, yeah. What's a little while for a, an au pair gig? I, um, well, the thing for me was, is like, if you get an actual green, like an actual visa for Europe, um, it's a really long and annoying process and you can get a tourist visa, like just by being an American, like you can just go and it's 90 days. And so okay. you're not technically supposed to work. You're not supposed to be able to make any money because you're a tourist. But as an au pair, you're living with this family, so they're giving you room and board for free. They're feeding you, and they give you pocket money, like allowance. So they pay you, but it's off the books. Like they're paying you in cash. Gotcha. So I'm technically, you know, I was technically making money over there, but it's not very much enough right. to do some cool stuff on the weekends because I basically money and yeah, yeah yeah Tomorrowland money yeah yeah exactly and um in Italy actually. I saved a lot more than this past summer. This summer, this past summer, I did a lot more traveling on the weekends and yeah. stuff. Saw, saw a lot more places. This summer was really, really fun. But, but I think, yeah, a, sh a short while for an au pair gig would probably be like ninety days, something like that. Okay. Just because it's long enough for them to make it worth it, and short enough where it's not a huge time commitment for yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Three months is still a long time though. By the third month, you really kind of feel like, wow, this is where I live. Like. You're not just feeling like an outsider. It's kind of weird. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. I, yeah. I, I I truly wish you the best in that adventure. Thanks, that's, man. That's gonna be that's gonna be awesome. Yeah. And yeah, man, just be a vagabond. Just do that thing, man. That's yeah. there's something so endearing and exciting about the idea of like just leaving behind everything yeah. and just go. And I feel like I'm squandering an opportunity if I don't like i'm gonna look back on my life and be like damn i had friends in australia and i never like went and couch like slept on their couch like yeah. damn i know a guy in south africa and he's invited me to come down there and i've never taken him up on it you know like stuff like that where it's like i've met so many cool people that it's like i need to just freaking do it yeah and before it's too late before they forget about me before you know all that kind of stuff while you're young too exactly while i'm single while i'm you know that's the that's another ultimate thing. It's like once you 
get hitched, that adds another thing. And then once you have kids, it's like a whole oh, yeah. other thing. It's it's an it's an anchor. It's, yeah, you can't just leave for three months and be an au pair when you're thirty. No, <laughs> no, you got to be an au pair to your own kids, and you're not getting paid for it. In fact, you're paying for it. Exactly. So yeah, before you're before you uh, blink and you realize that you're. You yeah, know, the fifty-year-old father of three on the Disney Carnival cruise ship. <laughs> See the world. Taking pictures of your kids is goofy. Yeah, yeah. Before before that happens, and you're you're getting a henna tattoo <laughs> on just, your bald head. Yeah, just travel the world, man. Travel the world. Exactly. That's awesome. And the country, to be honest, I want to travel more of the United States. Dude, there's so much. That's what you. At least for me, that was a big realization when I went over to Europe. Is like, this is smaller than the U obviously with the exception of Russia, this is smaller than the U S yeah. yeah. And there's so much of a variety of culture. And then you think about the U S and the idea that there's like a federal government to like r run all these people of like different backgrounds yeah. and cultures. And you realize that it's just sort of fucked from the start. Like where do you begin? It's kind of similar in certain ways where you've got like, you know, people from like Louisiana. Yeah they've got their own weird culture and accent and like almost language, you know, mm -hmm. and like they're pretty close, but like no one's going there to like get cultured. Yeah. And like go on vacation. Yeah. Like, like people are like, I'm going to go to France. Yeah. Like, you know, like I'm going to Louisiana to go uh, see some people from a different culture. Yeah. You're not thinking that at all. Yeah. You always want to upgrade when you're getting cultured. True. You, know? you never want to like, yeah, that is kind of a downgraded I mean, culture. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even though I know why it is. Cause I understand why it is, but yeah, cultural relativity right isn't that like the thing that people always say you shouldn't do is yeah is think like this culture fuck this culture this culture's not as yeah. good but that said we're better than them yeah and it, that's an interesting point <laughs> and i think that's a rabbit hole that could lead for hours and hours of discussion but yeah it is hard to say sometimes where it's like you know people want to say everyone's neutral but there are definitely some cultures that are not as good as you know ours or western culture in general like people like cultures that hang gay people like arguably that's a terrible culture like if that's <laughs> yeah. part of your culture fuck you like, yeah if you if you distill just down to the very bare basic ethic and sort of story of every culture as far as like what they believe in and tr sort of take the mean average of all the beliefs of the world and equal it divide it by x and fucking this is your output the one lesson would be just don't be a dick yeah <laughs> like that's I the agree. one thing everyone in the world pretty much for the most part agrees on is like i think so just don't be a dick like yeah don't don't hang gay people yeah <laughs> don't be a dick like that's i think like you, like we were kind of talking about earlier it boils down to like do your thing as long as your thing doesn't interfere with interfere with me doing my thing i'm cool with whatever you want to do and hopefully you're cool with whatever i want to do don't be a dick don't be a dick to me don't make yeah. me yeah Pretty much. You can play your music as loud as you want. As long as it's not annoying me. Yeah, just don't do it at 3 a.m. when I'm trying yeah, to sleep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you want to smoke weed in your apartment, cool. I don't care. It's in your thing. Like, it's not affecting me. If you want to marry a gay dude and have butt sex, like, that's cool. Like, it's not affecting me. It's not my cup of tea, but... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, I think that's a good... I think that's a good place to finish off, I think man. so, too. I think that's, a honestly, a, a great a great lesson of and theme of the episode is see the world... Be and a good be a citizen dick. of the world too. Don't go someplace thinking that you're going to be, you know, like, like impose your culture and do your own thing yeah. in someone else's turf. Yeah. Cause I, I, at least from my travels, I feel like the worst at that are like 22 year old British men mm -hmm. who go to, you know, like fucking Ibiza and order a Carlsberg. You know exactly. I mean? Like exactly. Just live with Fuck the culture. Guys. Don't try to fight people and be loud and fucking. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. That was a very specific example. I don't but know. I know. But there are specific examples like that. And uh, I know we're trying to wrap this up, but real no, no, fast, no, when we were at the beach in Spain, we spent like a little while. We spent like uh, two or three weeks at the beach at their beach house in Spain, and there was this one hotel. There was a German hotel. And if you tried to go stay there and you weren't German, they'd tell you that they were fully booked, no no vacancy. And the only people that can stay in this hotel are Germans. Everyone speaks German. They all go to bed super early. Um, they all go out and like eat at the same time. Like Spanish culture is like very different. They all eat super late. They'll hang out at the bar until one or two in the morning. They'll eat at, they'll eat dinner at like ten p.m. The Germans are fast asleep in their hotel by that time. 
like is hilarious and they come to spain but they have they want nothing to do with the spaniards they just want to be germans in spain so crazy man yeah so for for the folks at home if you're thinking about going out there into the world and seeing it swan dive into that shit head first just do it just and do it. shed your shed your i guess you know your expectations and try to absorb as much as you can because that's really what it's all about absolutely absolutely shed the ego be a sponge learn as much as you can from this tr- fucking trippy experience because you only get you only get one go at it man so andrew this is the shit man i, yeah. I really appreciate you coming on this is a great conversation and yeah and uh hopefully hopefully our paths will cross again before i set Head off on my way to Chicago. Set sail yeah man all right folks be good out there thanks for listening this is the logical insanity podcast signing off peace and with that we close the final chapter on the logical insanity podcast i'm honestly very honored that i was able to put this out into the world it's kind of honestly just kind of strange to say it but i don't think any of this would have ever gone down if i hadn't said yes to graham's text asking me to be on the show it's like the catalyst that finally got me to make the decision to do my own podcast and excuse me oh jeez. Um, (laughs) this is the end of the podcast. So if you're already listening, hopefully you don't mind that yawn. I'm not editing it out, but, um, I think that that is a big moral of this story and you got to say yes to opportunities and recognize them as such when they cross your path. Like it would have been really easy for me to write it off and just say, no, like, you know, what's the point? No one's probably going to really listen to this podcast. I don't know. It's so silly, but that one decision really did like change my life. And I hope that you guys make those life changing dis- opportunities when you come across them. And maybe it doesn't even seem like it's a life changing opportunity, but for me, just saying yes to things and doing things that maybe get you out of your comfort zone a little bit might be that thing that takes you to the next level. You never know. And also, I just want to inspire people that even though maybe your project has an end, like Graham's project of the Logical Insanity podcast came to an end, it birthed and sparked something in my podcast that like he never expected. So just take heart in that, that your thing, even though it might not take off the way you want it to, or you might not continue it the way you want to, your thing might inspire someone else to to create another thing, you know, and that's kind of beautiful, you know, but anyways, um, I'm going to stop being so sappy, but, um, to add on to that, this wasn't really easy by any means, uh, uploading a hundred episodes in a year is not an easy task for anyone logistically, physically, emotionally. And even though I say that, uh, this, po- that, that this was life changing, I've easily spent like 30% of my last year working on this podcast. And I don't say that with exaggeration. Like I calculated it out and based on the hours, like literally in the past year, almost one third of my entire time being alive last year, I dedicated to this podcast. And this podcast would almost take a week to listen to nonstop if you just played it from front to back. Like you, it would take you multiple weeks to listen to it simply because you'd have to sleep. Um, but if that doesn't say something, I don't know what does. So to Graham, I can't thank you enough, buddy. And enough with the sappy stuff. I'm going to bring it home with a couple of recommendations. So number one, if you enjoyed this episode, I know you're going to love listening to episode nine of the podcast with Graham. He was um, so awesome enough to ask me to be on his podcast. So of course, I asked him to be on my podcast as well. And like I said, if you enjoyed this one, you'll enjoy that podcast as well. That was episode nine. And you should also go back if you're in a nostalgic mood, you might as well go back and listen to episode one with uh, Adam Kishoro. If you're in, in a nostalgic mood, you know, it's the one year anniversary of that podcast today. So um, that is absolutely nuts to me. Today is what, May 3rd, right? Yeah, May 3rd, um, 2018. And we recorded the first episode of the Andrew Deitch podcast one year ago today. So if you want to support the show, please go to iTunes, rate it five stars. That always really, really helps me out. Thank you guys so much for being so supportive over the past year. Also, if you want to follow me, you can go to my website, andrewdeitch.com. That's andrew, D-E-I-T-S-C-H.com. You can find all the links to all my social media handles and accounts. 
I've been posting a lot on Instagram and YouTube recently, starting to make some YouTube videos. That's pretty exciting. Uh, But thank you guys so much for listening. Next Monday, so that would be May 7th, I'll be posting episode 90 of the podcast. Very excited about that one. Um, It is another three-way, another threesome. So stay tuned. Thank you guys so much for listening, and I will see you guys next week. So, yeah, before before you uh, blink and you realize that you're – yeah, the fifty-year-old father of three on the Disney Carnival cruise ship, getting a henna tattoo. Just travel the world, man. Travel the world. Exactly.